Hi everyone, this is Natraj. I am back with the other video. In this video, I am going to talk about that creating the cloud function in second generations on GCP with the Terraform. The second generation of the cloud function is significant advancement in that serverless compute space. To compare with the first generation, the several key enhancements that empower to build the more robust and scalable applications. Generation types. There are two types of generation is available in the cloud function. The first generation is the first version. One of my previous video, I covered the entire thing. If you want to more information about that generation one, please check out the link in the description tab. Next one is that second generation. The new version is built on that cloud run and effect top. In this video, we will walk through that using the Terraform to create that Google Cloud function that tier the when the file is uploaded and the output of the file is details into the log. Comparison table. We can see the features about that Gen 1 and Gen 2. The first one is that image registry. The image registry can generally can support with that container registry as well as for that artifact registry. When I compare to that Gen 2, it can only support with the artifact registry. Next one is that request time mode. The Gen 1 you can up to 9 minutes only will be supported. Compared to the Gen 2, it can support with the 60 minutes for the HTTP triggering functions and also that 9 minutes will be support for event trigger functions. Next one is the instant types. The Gen 1 again can support with the 8 GB RAM with the 2 CPU core. In compared to in compared to that second generation, it can up to support with the 16 GB RAM with the 4 cores. Next one is that concurrency. It can support with the one concurrency for the Gen 1 and comparatively with the Gen 2, it can support with 1000 concurrent request. Next one is that traffic splits. It does not support with the Gen 1. In compared to that Gen 2, it can support it. Next one is that event types. Gen 1 is so far support with the seven source of the resources. In Gen 2, it can support with more than 90 plus services. Next one is the cloud event. It support only for Ruby, .NET and PHP runtime. Compared with that Gen 2, it can support for all the language runtimes. So I am moving to the Visual Studio to briefly explain about the Terraform coding. We are at the Visual Studio code. The entire source code is available on my repository. You can clone from any time. Here we are detailing the breakdown of the each component of the Terraform code separately. We can see the file one by one. The first one is that main.tf file. The first resource is that service account resource. Here we are going to create the Google service accounts with the specific project ID, account ID and a display name. Next resource is that local variables. Here we are defining the local variable for that project ID, region, service accounts of the email ID. Also we are assigning the list of roles assigning to that service account. This service account roles it can differ with the project to projects. The next resource is that IAM member resource. Here we are assigning that specific role to that service account for the projects. The next resource is that we are enabling that APIs using this uh, model to enabling the list of Google APIs required for the my projects. Next resource is that storage bucket resource. This storage bucket resource can be containing the source code of the my cloud functions. Next resource is that storage bucket resource. This bucket is uh, acting as that input bucket. So it will be triggering the cloud function based on that file is uploads. The next resource is that archive files. Here we are zipping the source code of that our applications. Next resource is that Google storage bucket object. Here we are adding the source code of the zip file to that cloud function bucket. Next resource is that data block. We are retrieving that Google Cloud Storage Service account for the project ID. Next resource is that I am binding for my PubSub publisher. We grant the role to the PubSub publisher to my uh, storage service account. Next one is that Cloud Function Gen 2. We define and managing the Cloud Function Gen 2. This resource is allowed to deploy and configuring that serverless function that can be triggered by the various events such as HTTP request, PubSub message and the changing into that Google storage. Yeah, we can see the parameter one by one. We are configuring the Google function with a specific name, locations and the projects and the descriptions. Next one is that build underscore config. 
So the specific build config we are including the runtime entry points and that source. Next one is the service underscore config. This service configuration we are including that memory, time mode, environment variable, also that ingress settings. Here the ingress settings right now we are allowing the internal only. If you want to expose in globally, so also it can possibility. Next one is that we are set up in that event trigger for the functions which will be listed for finalize the event on the specific cloud storage packet. Depend on attributes, so ensure that the function is deployed only after the certain resource will be going to create such as storage packet IM bindings. So we can see the next file, the provider.tf file. The Terraform provider is necessary for maintaining that Google Cloud services. Here we are I'm including the both stable uh, Google provider as well as for the Google beta provider. When we go choose with the Google beta provider for assessing for the extra features they will be provided. Next parameter is the credentials. Here I am using the JSON service account. So it, this service account is containing the necessary permissions to create my cloud functions. So apart from that the project IDs and region don't is according to my project demo. Next one is that variable.tf file. So this file is defined as the variable for the Terraform configurations. The Terraform variables like name, ID, project ID, resource are defining with then descriptions and also that default variables. Next one is that git.ignores. So I am ignoring that files from my during that my pushing to the repositories. For example, you can see here that all the libraries as well as my keys also. The next one is that src directory. Uh, this src directory we added the two file the first one is the index.js next one is that package.json the following code it used to capture the name of the uploading that my object so we moving to the terminal to execution the terraform operations i'm going to click the three dot then click that new terminal so I can just um, elaborate the screen now I am going to execute that uh, Terraform init command to downloading the all the required plugin. So we are installing the plugins. So next one is that we are going to execute the Terraform plan command to create the execution plan. The execution plan looks good so let us move ahead to that apply that plan they asking the user input you can also use that auto upload option also to avoid that input from the user this time provide the yes now the resource is going to create Now the Terraform option successfully completed. To test that everything is working correctly, we have to log into the GCP console to validate entire thing. Now I am navigating my Chrome browser. So right now I am that uh, my GCP console page. I choose my project. Now I am going to type with bucket in that search button. I click the bucket. So we are going to click the storage buckets. This is my source bucket of my cloud function. I'm going to click on it here. Now I'm trying to upload my random any file. I'm going to click on the upload files. I choose with any random pictures. I choose with both. Now I'm uploading started. Yeah, now, now the file is successfully uploaded. Now I'm navigating to the cloud function. I click the cloud functions. Yeah, you can say I think the cloud functions is created from Terraform. The environment is Gen 2. So also you can see the thing the running time environment uh, I choose with the Node.js 16 version. 
I'm going to click that my cloud function name here. Then I'm navigating to that logs. Yeah, you can scroll up slightly. You can see here the board.jpg image is visible here. Yeah, this is a way we can able to validate my cloud functions. I hope this video will be useful to everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye.